Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Carpo's channel. I haven't made a video in a few days. I've been kind of tied up with work and uh, work and play. I guess it was my uh, son's birthday, my youngest son, on Friday, and then my wife's birthday on Sunday. So uh, we went out and stayed at uh, the Crystal Hotel downtown. Hung out, went to a concert, and uh, just kind of tried to enjoy the day. And I did some thinking <laughs> over the last couple days about just what what it means to be alive and trying to pull ourselves up whenever we're feeling a little bit down or lost. You know, depression, anxiety, these things are the, maybe the extreme versions of, you know, tough times in life, but there's a few, I don't know, there's something to be said about just, what's the word I guess I would be looking for, maybe just kind of the monotony of daily life and the way that it somewhat, it can drag us down over time and we don't even realize it. You know, get up, go to work, do the route, do the rounds, the routines, and I'll tell you, as humans, you know, it's a tough, it's a t there's a line to between, you know, being able to function in society that we have and being immersed in it to the point where you're programmed and where you can't even think for yourself any longer, where perhaps you have bought into the bullshit of, you know, the propaganda that, you know, we're a consumer society and it's all about go, go, go and climbing the corporate ladder. I mean, these things are actually important to people. These are things that people base their worth on, is how much money they have, or their success on what position they hold within a company. Um, <clears throat> and for some people that works, but it becomes a problem when we start to look down on others that have maybe found a different path. A good example would be a person, you know, just by being, by being rich and being wealthy does not mean you're successful, um, but if it makes you happy, so be it. I would say, though, a person who is very wealthy, who's looking down on someone who's, uh, let's say, a hippie type, you know, just because they seem to be in a different class, the whole idea that classism and the spread between, um, you know, the disparity between the, the rich and the poor grows wider. I mean, it's, it's a sign of every imminent society collapse and every advanced society, if you want to call it that. Um, eventually does collapse under the weight of its own ignorance. It's a matter of uh, being able to find the diamond in the rough in our own lives. So I guess what I'm saying is that we tend to look at society as a whole and say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, a different approach would be to look within our hearts and say, well, I'm just going to follow my heart and I'm going to find my life path. And <clears throat> it's a very... Um, Following our heart, in other words, we might call that intuition. Um, and I've discussed this with people in depth, so I, you know, because I used to say, just follow your instinct. And they say, but your instinct is, uh, or at least your intuition is formed by your past experiences. So your intuition, as far as how to handle a situation, may be based in knowing, even subconsciously, you know, how that's worked for you in the past or hasn't worked for you. Or just the way that our brains work. Um, we know a lot more than we know. You know, our brains are um, constantly processing information in the background, allowing us to make decisions without having to sit and be conscious about, well, I need to take one more footstep and take another footstep. Um, and our reactions are, uh, I don't know, somewhat set up by how we, how we respond to our environment. So if somebody puts their hand up to give you a high five, and you duck and you cower, you know, it's, it's like that reaction, <coughs> the fear reaction, uh, is much, uh, you know, it's visible in that way, but it, there's a lot more fear reaction that isn't visible. For example, uh, fear has been used to play, you know, convince people to play the game of life this way. And if you don't do this, then you're going to suffer. And uh, it's very hard to find our own path and really know if it's our own hearts telling us this or if we're just fooling ourselves. It's a difficult thing to even explain or, or discuss, you know. I at one time believed, well, I've never really believed in a life path, but uh, rather that we create our own, 
you know, based on our circumstances. We adapt, we morph, we evolve within the circumstances of our surroundings. So, um, if you couldn't say if you moved from, you know, one country to another that that was your life path, or you could say it was a decision you made because you wanted to change your life path, if you know what I mean. And nothing's set in stone. You know, everybody has their own opinions about what's real and what's not. I think some of the the most difficult things to overcome in, in deciding what life is all about is, you know, the the vast chasm between religion and atheism, or even just, you know, atheism would be the not to believe in a personal God. Um, this word has been so, you know, uh, it's a word. It's, its definition is uh, subjective in many ways, because some people may say, well, an atheist believes in nothing, and another person says, well, they don't believe in a personal God, but an atheist may consider themselves a spiritual person. Say spiritual, because uh, that word just has become as meaningless as religion itself, you know, because there is such a vast amount of differences in opinion. Um, but following what we believe in our hearts and what we think is important is important, of course, but um, listening to society and what others tell us is equally important to what we think is right. If we go by just what we feel in our hearts and that we think is right, we might be right a lot of the time, but it may not work in certain circumstances. It's when when you found something in your life that that you find to be important, um, hanging on to that, you know, it allows us to have purpose. For those of us with kids, it's a it's a great example. When you have kids, you whether you had purpose before or not, or a life path, that becomes your purpose at that point. Not all parents feel that way. Some parents uh, have kids and they continue to work in their career, but it's still their priority. And uh, those are the parents who, you know, work long hours and send their kids to daycare all day. And, um, you yeah, know, put it this way, if you're working hard, you're making great money. Um, and with that money, you, you continue to buy bigger and bigger houses and nicer and nicer cars. And you can't even be home to enjoy them. And the nanny stays with the kids all the time. I, I don't understand what, what the meaning of life becomes other than just making money. In other words, sharing those experiences with your kids are so important. Being a stay-at-home dad for me has been an amazing experience. It's been very, very difficult because, you know, when you're at home with your kids 24 hours a day, it can be hard. Um, it wasn't always that way. I had uh, I was a carpenter for years, and then my sciatica got so bad that I couldn't even work anymore. I mean, I realized that I had lived in that reality of pain for so long, and it was such pain all the time. That it was just my my life. That was just what I was used to. And one day I just grabbed my tools and I said, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. And I came home and for a while I just sat there and said, what do I do now? You know, It's not that I said I am a carpenter and that's what my life path is. It's just that that's what I was doing and that's what I knew. And that's often what we do is we get stuck in a situation because it's what we know. But when we're forced out of it, we have to start over. You know, and like that was when I decided to start my Kratom business because I thought, well, at least I can do something from home, still be with my kids. Of course, I end up spending so much time in my office working that it might as well be at work, but being at home for me is such an important thing. But, um, you know, to back to re you know, the religion idea for a minute, it gives people comfort. It's just the same thing as having, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, one of the biggest issues for us is deciding where we come from and where we've gone, or where we're going. And... Uh, for a lot of people, that really is all that matters. They have to know what's going to happen. And life becomes unbearable if they can't confirm that there's a heaven after they die. Um, for others, it's more complicated. Maybe they believe in reincarnation, but everybody wants to believe that we carry on. And who can blame us? I mean, human being human is confusing. We've evolved the ability to sit and rationally discuss and build things so we can talk on a camera here and share it and think, think about it and share it with other people so they can go, hmm, you know, and share in kind. I mean, that, that's something very, <laughs> as far as we know, um, very distinct in the animal kingdom. The ability to share, not just share or communicate, but to document that and build upon that. And it's put us in a very confused realm because, for example, science evolves with the information that it receives, but it's still just as stubborn as religion in many regards. You know, for hundreds of years, you know, a theory will remain uh, as, as just, you know, the way it is because every generation of scientists has said, well, that's what they said beforehand. 
but eventually are forced to change when you can see in front of you that something is or isn't true and you can prove it through experiments and, and science becomes the enemy to religion because it often tries to disprove a lot of what religion believe, wants to believe. Um, Christianity, you know, uh, is in decline but it's not a matter of uh, it's not a matter of saying ha ha look religion's collapsing because people do need something to hang on to. I understand that. It's when the others are pushed out of the picture. You know, in other words, I live my life quietly. I'll sit here and I'll make videos, I'll talk to people about stuff, but if they don't want to hear it, I'm not going to push it on them or into their face and say, this is what's true. Uh, you know, it was uh, yesterday. Yesterday morning, <clears throat> I think. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday morning, I was kind of laying on the couch, relaxing, and I get this knock on the door. And uh, I get up and I open the door and there's this guy out there, probably about my age, maybe a little older, uh, with the suit on, and then he has uh, another fella standing a few feet behind him with two little kids. Instantly I know what's going on, you know. They are either Jehovah's Witnesses, I know they're not Mormons, I've dealt with so many religious people at my door that, you know, uh, sometimes I just say I'm not interested. In the past I've been a little scathing and asked them questions and kind of prodded, but I don't want to offend or bother anybody. But this time, you know, I I was just as respectful as always. He gave me the little <laughs> little thing about, you know, a little pamphlet or whatever, and he said, Yeah, we're just passing this information and he says, Can I ask you a question? You know, do you do you read the or you know, do you read read the Bible or do you take the you know, Christ as your savior? And I said, Actually I do read the Bible. I have a couple of copies, as well as a copies of, you know, I've read parts of the Quran and I have you know, the Bhagavad Gita and, and various other religious texts and he goes and I said, have you, have you checked those out? And he goes, no, 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 oh no, because that's the devil's word. And I said, well, how can you know if you've never read them? And he goes, well, because it tells us in this book. And I said, no, 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 it doesn't tell you in that book, because these were books, some of these books were written after that. For example, the Quran was written well after the Bible. So what is the reason for not looking and, you know, inspecting if you have a book that tells you that there's been no, you know, that this is the word of God, but it's the New Testament, how can you know there's not another New Testament? And it wasn't a matter of me trying to push on him, but uh, the guy was pretty much in complete denial of any type of discussion. In other words, he wouldn't even entertain my notion of question. And I said, how can you be sure about these things? And uh, he asked me, you know, he said, can I read you one verse? And I said, sure. He said, of course, it was John 3.16, which I think is something along the lines of, you know, God gave his only begotten son and no one comes to heaven except through him. And I told him, well, I thought that I think that that's kind of a misunderstanding, in my opinion. I think that, um, you know, that Jesus maybe wanted us to live more in His image, but not to worship Him directly. And he goes, well, that's not what we believe. And he says, and I said, well, how can you know? And he goes, it's faith. He goes, it's faith. You just, we have faith. And and he said, if you can't have faith, then I guess we can't explain it. He started to walk off, and I was like, well, I was like, I feel, you know, that's kind of, you know, <laughs> what's the word? I mean, it's it's like I, I find it, it's not offensive, but it's, you know, it's, I guess, pathetic that somebody would come to, I would say, I, I, he's like, well, I'm, no, thanks anyway, we got, we got to, we got to go, and I said, well, I find it, you know, it's kind of sad that you would come to my door and knock on my door to try to share your information, but you're not willing to hear me at all, and he goes, well, we got to go, we, we got to get going, and I said, well, what's your hurry, and he says, we got a lot of people to save, people are going to hell, and he's just storming off to the next, next house, and I was just so, bother, because I said, well, if I had agreed with him, uh, then he would have stayed there for an hour talking about God, I'm sure. Um, I mean, the whole idea is, aren't you trying to confront people who don't believe and explain why they should believe? But uh, if they're not armed with the ability to understand anything else, then that's all they have. And I remember yelling to the kids as they were leaving, you know, and I said, kids, you don't have to believe this. There is no hell. You're not going to hell. Don't let your parents scare you. And I know I bothered the hell out of those guys, but I just wanted to plant that seed in their head to say you don't have to walk door to door with these adults and have them scare the shit out of everybody that people are going to hell. I mean, and this maybe this is why it bothers me is the idea that people believe that you're really going to burn for eternity if you don't worship an idol. An idol worship through all of religious history has you know, most religions have found that idol worship in the end becomes the problem because 
you know, people are hanging onto the cross and, you know, loving on Jesus instead of loving on the, the reality of their fellow man and assuming, and that's what I told him, I said, I said, I, it's hard for me to assume that, that a minority of the earth's population is going to hell or is going to heaven and that everyone else is unworthy and going to hell. It's like, that's, if that's God's creation, then there's some pretty, pretty big issues to work out and the kinks, you know, and I said, I totally respect the idea that we all want to believe something, but I'm not coming to your door telling you what I believe, you know, um, and I guess faith is one of those things that people have to find on their own. Uh, I have faith that the universe is conscious, and that's what I told him. I said, I said, I believe that the universal mind, the universe, is conscious and aware, and that, it's, in other words, in my mind, there's no way it can't be. Uh, through all the thinking I've done over the years, like, about, you know, the comparisons between humans and our own cells and bacteria within our bodies and the way that they operate and this whole, you know, quantum operation of things and how atoms are more or less empty space and everything is energy and then you start comparing planets and solar systems and seeing these larger patterns and pretty soon it just becomes obvious. The universe is conscious. It's aware. In its own way. You know, it doesn't sit and think about what to do next like humans do. It's something we can't comprehend. Just like an ant has its hive mind but can't comprehend a human walking by. Um, it's not within our realm to understand. And I firmly believe that, that we're not meant to understand the deeper mysteries. And actually somebody, I was watching uh, Aaron Gawk earlier and he was talking about that, you know, he, he um, in one of his videos. Just that, that, you know, it's just, we can't really, <laughs> basically it's like this, you know, we all want something to hang on to. We all want something to respect and we want people in our lives and meaningful things in our lives and I think that it's very you, you can't lay that out on the table and say this is what humans should be doing there's just no way all humans are different we all have a vast differences of interest what we can do is say how is our beliefs or our actions affecting others around us go back to the simple rules the golden rules the idea that you know you say please and thank you, that you respect everyone equally, that you don't judge. You know, just like the idea of many of the religious texts talking about don't judge and don't covet your neighbor's goods, these things. These are all things that any society understands. You don't steal from people. You don't take others and things that don't belong to you. Um, you respect the world around you and respect yourself is something that seems to be left out quite a bit. It's almost like a, in, in many religions uh, we're looked to be... Um, some people think of us as a cancer, like humans are born in sin, that we are, you know, instantly believing that sets us up to think that we need to be forgiven for something that we haven't done. You know, I set that, that's a preposterous notion I set in the back of my mind. It's, it's, uh, what, what I'm, what I understand from that is that we need to yearn for being a greater person. And for some people, they can't find it within themselves, and so they look externally, and that's fine. As long as you have something to inspire you, but as long as we're trying to tell others how they should live or what they should be doing, um, I think that we're living in our own sin, if you will. But the ultimate sin would be judgment, hostility, abuse.